the first moment I realized the magnitude of what it meant to be a single mom, I was at the intersection of Gray Hendrix and Byington Solway Road, and I felt hot and nauseated, and I was shaking, and I had to pull off the road because I was so scared, because I really did see the magnitude of having to raise two children by myself, and I was terrified. Your goal is to get to a point where your uh, children are successful contributing adults, and for me, that did not happen until we went through the Restoration House and Courtney graduated from the Restoration House. That, was a, that too was a very difficult time for both of us. We didn't have a relationship that was successful until she got through the program. I believe that if the Restoration House existed and been a part of my life, I probably wouldn't be a single mom. I agree. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be a single mom. It's the truth. When I found out I was going to be a single mom, um, it was the worst day of my life, without a doubt. Financially, how was I going to do it? I mean, I work at the mall, and you know, I make 12 bucks an hour. That's fine for a single person, but with a whole nother human that you have to take care of, how are you going to do that? People don't realize that a lot of single moms go to bed at night wondering if they're going to be able to sleep in the same spot the next day or if their child is even going to be with them the next day because who knows what's going to happen. I, I mean, I didn't feel like I had anybody and it was just, specifically I can remember him teething and there was a night and I could not get him to calm down and I was like, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. He's going to be crying, like in my mind at that moment, he's going to be crying forever for like four more years. He's just going to be crying. In the very beginning, early on, I told myself I wasn't going to be a statistic, and I have refused before the Restoration House, walking through the Restoration House, and currently, like, I will fight anybody to not be a statistic, because that's not fair for our children, so. If the Restoration House was never in my life, I would probably be another statistic. I would probably still be on food stamps. I would probably be in government housing. And I probably would not be sitting here today. Well, I mean, I guaranteed I wouldn't be sitting here today next to my mom because we probably wouldn't even be talking. I wouldn't have a degree. I wouldn't have a degree because I was terrified. There's people that pushed me and told me, hey, you are smart enough. You, you can go to school. You can graduate. I wouldn't be able to have a relationship with God that I have now, then you realize like, it's really gonna be okay because he proves to you that it's gonna be okay over and over. Okay, These are go. the five things that a single mom needs, priorities that a single mom needs to be successful. Financial, education, education. community, healthy relationships, a good church family, and no handouts. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, we did it, we found it out. <laughs> That was the really bad phone call. That's when I found out my ex-husband had um, come in on my parents with a gun looking for me and the kids. I had no clue that this had gone on and it had been weeks. And I didn't know if he was coming to get us. And so I spent about eight or nine years after he got out of jail um, hiding. Um, as I was raising my kids over the last 18 years, I uh, didn't realize all the things that were going to come into play. Um, I have a child with a gluten allergy, <laughs> and it comes between paying the rent or organic, gluten-free foods. Um, I had little education, uh, a year and a half of college, and had no idea how to get back into college with student loans. And then figuring out, how am I going to get a place on my own? Going to the grocery store and using the government assistance of WIC, I ended up dropping that because it was so embarrassing. And you come to the register and, you know, there might be one person behind you, but the person at the register is trying to read through each thing that you can get. Them ringing everything up, and by the time they're done, there's 10 people behind you, and all eyes are on you. Um, person at the register is mad because they have to do it. They don't understand why you're there. So you have people that get angry. You have people that get mad. They say nasty things. And you want to turn around and scream at them, you know. 
my husband tried to kill me. <laughs> you know, I didn't plan on doing this by myself. Then you have some people that just feel sorry for you and give you those sorry looks. But the amount of anxiety you feel when you're doing something like that, your face is red, you're apologizing, and you're shaking and you're scared. Now that I've been through everything, gone to school, and been out on my own, and I don't have any government assistance, it's such a, it's like you want everybody to see before you didn't want anybody to see, but now when you check out of the register and you're using cash, there's no better feeling than coming home, putting your groceries away. One of the pieces missing for me was education. And with my time at Restoration House, they helped me find not only where to go, but what would be good for me and my family and help me cram it in that time that I had with Restoration House. I went to UT and tripled my income by going to school. And now I work for a huge company and have moved up three times since my small two years there. When I first left Restoration House, I was so mad at Daniel. <laughs> I was so mad at Restoration House. I felt like they were kicking me out and I wasn't ready. And I had, you know, just a few months of subsidized housing that I was living in. And Daniel explained that to me in Restoration House of why he was having us pay rent. And I didn't get it until I moved out and was paying my own rent. And I thought, okay, if I hadn't have done this for the last year or more, I wouldn't be able to do it now. They make you work for it. They make you do what everyday average people who aren't on assistance do. It's just when you fall, they pick you up and they just you just know that you're in training. You're a normal person in training. <laughs>